Yo, what's up everyone? Now the world of cybersecurity is constantly evolving, right? And if you're even remotely interested in ethical hacking, you know that staying ahead of the curve is key. We're talking about understanding how attackers think, how they build their tools, and how they operate in 2025 and beyond. That's what we're diving into today. This isn't just some surface level overview though, we're going deep, dissecting the evolution of hacking, the tools, the techniques, the whole nine yards. Think of it like reverse engineering an attack, but on a conceptual level. By the end of this, you'll have a better grasp of the landscape and what it takes to really up your ethical hacking game. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get started. All right, so let's kick things off by paying homage to the OGs, the classic hacking tools that paved the way. We're talking about things like Nmap for network scanning, Metasploit for penetration testing, and Wireshark for, well, you guessed it, analyzing network traffic. These tools are legendary for a reason. They're powerful, they're versatile, and they've been the cornerstone of ethical hacking for years. But here's the thing, the cybersecurity landscape is like a constantly shifting battlefield. Attackers are always finding new ways to exploit vulnerabilities, which means the tools we use to defend against them need to evolve as well. So while these classic tools still hold value, they're not the be-all and end-all anymore. Okay, let's talk Python. Python has been the go-to language for hackers for years. It's easy to learn and has a massive library of modules. But now there's a shift away from Python. Why speed and detection? Python isn't fast and it's easily flagged by security software. Hackers are turning to C++, Go, Rust, and NIM. These languages offer speed, security, and lower detection. Let's talk payloads, the actual piece of code that gets executed on a target system during an attack. Now, back in the day, hackers would often rely on pre-built payloads, kind of like off-the-shelf tools. They were readily available, easy to use, but also easy to detect. Fast forward to today, and we're seeing a surge in the use of custom payloads. These are payloads that are specifically designed for a particular target or attack vector. Think of it like this. Instead of using a generic key that might fit a few locks, you're crafting a unique key that's tailor-made to open one specific door. The beauty of custom payloads is their effectiveness. They're like stealth missiles designed to bypass traditional security measures and deliver their malicious code with pinpoint accuracy. This is because they're often obfuscated, meaning their code is scrambled to make it difficult to analyze and understand. And because they're custom built, they're less likely to be flagged by signature-based detection systems, which rely on recognizing known patterns in malware. Chapter 4. How Hackers Mimic Legit Software Alright, let's talk about deception. Hackers make malicious tools look like legitimate software. It's about social engineering and human psychology. One technique is trojanizing. Hackers inject malicious code into legitimate software. Users download it, thinking it's safe. Another method is creating fake websites. They spoof domains and use SSL certificates. The goal is to steal user credentials. Chapter 5. Stealth is the ultimate weapon. In hacking, stealth is the ultimate weapon. It's about being a ghost, undetected. What good is a powerful exploit if it gets detected immediately? Persistence is key, remaining hidden, gathering information and attacking without raising suspicion. Hackers minimize their footprint and blend in with normal network traffic. Chapter 6. AI-Powered Hacking Tools Okay, let's talk about the future, about how artificial intelligence is changing the game in hacking. We're not talking about some sci-fi scenario with sentient robots taking over the world, but rather, how AI is being used to develop smarter, faster, and more effective hacking tools. Think about it, AI excels at pattern recognition, data analysis, and automation, all of which are incredibly valuable in the world of cybersecurity. AI-powered tools can sift through massive amounts of data in seconds, identifying vulnerabilities that would take a human analyst hours, days, or even weeks to find. One area where AI is making a huge impact is in vulnerability discovery. Traditional vulnerability scanners often rely on a database of known exploits, which means they're only as good as the information they have. But AI-powered scanners can learn from past attacks, identifying patterns and anomalies that might indicate a new or unknown vulnerability. Alright, let's talk about automation, but not just any automation, we're talking about the kind 
that makes hacking tools think and act more like humans. See, traditional automated tools, while useful, often follow rigid scripts, making them predictable and easily detectable. But what if we could create tools that mimic human behavior? Tools that could blend in with legitimate user activity and evade even the most sophisticated security systems. That's the goal of human-like hacking automation, to create tools that can think on their feet, adapt to changing circumstances, and make decisions that would normally require human intelligence. This is where things get really interesting because we're talking about blurring the lines between man and machine. One way this is being achieved is through machine learning. By feeding massive amounts of data into machine learning algorithms, developers can train hacking tools to recognize patterns, learn from experience, and make decisions based on context. It's like teaching a computer to think like a hacker, to anticipate the moves of its opponent and respond accordingly. Another key aspect is natural language processing, or NLP. Chapter 8. Fake guys for social engineering. Let's get real for a second. A lot of hacking isn't about complex code or zero-day exploits. It's about exploiting the weakest link in the chain humans. And one of the most effective ways to do that is through social engineering, the art of manipulating people into giving up sensitive information or access to their devices. Now, fake graphical user interfaces, or GUIs, are playing an increasingly important role in social engineering attacks. These are essentially windows or pop-ups that look like they belong to a legitimate program or website, but are actually designed to trick you into entering your credentials or downloading malware. Think about it. You're going about your day, checking your email, browsing the web, when suddenly a pop-up appears warning you about a virus or a security threat. It looks official, it's got the right logo, the right colors, maybe even a familiar looking URL. You're caught off guard, you panic and you click the button eager to resolve the issue. Chapter 9, Undetectable Command and Control. Alright, let's talk about Command and Control, or C2, the backbone of any successful hacking operation. This is how attackers maintain communication with compromised systems, sending commands, receiving data, and basically having their way with the target network. Now the name of the game in C2 is Stealth. If the C2 channel gets detected, the whole operation is blown wide open. So how do hackers create these undetectable lines of communication? Well, one common technique is called domain fronting, where they hide their malicious traffic behind legitimate domains like Google or Amazon. It's like sending a secret message through a crowded marketplace, using the noise and chaos to mask your true intentions. Another method is to leverage existing protocols like DNS or HTTP, tunneling their C2 traffic through these seemingly innocent channels. It's like disguising your voice when you're on the phone, making it sound like you're having a normal conversation, when in reality, you're transmitting sensitive information. Chapter 10. Building Self-Sustaining Tools. Let's talk about the holy grail of hacking, creating tools that can operate independently, sustain themselves, and even spread without any human intervention. We're talking about self-replicating worms, autonomous bots, and other forms of malware that can infect a system, lie dormant for extended periods, and then spring to life when the time is right. Now, building these kinds of tools requires a deep understanding of programming, network security, and the art of stealth. It's about creating code that's not only effective, but also incredibly resilient and adaptable, capable of surviving in hostile environments and evading detection by even the most sophisticated security systems. One of the key aspects of self-sustaining tools is their ability to propagate, to spread from one system to another without any human intervention. This is often achieved through a combination of exploit social engineering techniques and clever use of network protocols. It's like planting a seed that can take root and grow on its own, spreading its tendrils throughout the network. Outro, so we've covered a lot of ground here, from the evolution of classic hacking tools to the rise of AI-powered exploits and the importance of stealth in the digital age. The key takeaway? Cybersecurity is a constantly evolving landscape. If you're serious about ethical hacking, continuous learning is non-negotiable. Dive deep into programming, master new languages, understand how AI is being used, and never underestimate the power of social engineering. 
The more you know about how attackers think, build, and operate, the better prepared you'll be to defend against them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.